We almost never identify the victims of sexual assault. But this 13 Investigates cold case goes back more than 20 years. And the survivor really wants to share her incredible story tonight of surprise justice. Our own Rich and I followed this case for almost two years. And he traveled to Wisconsin to meet the woman who finally found some closure. The Mississippi River flows peacefully past La Crosse, the largest city on the western border of Wisconsin. <laughs> Amy McKnight has found her piece here. All your puzzles are in there. We could do a puzzle, that'd be fun. At 50, she is mom to five-year-old Fiona. <laughs> Having a baby in her mid-40s surprised Amy and her husband Barry. I mean, we'll be probably, you know, in walkers and stuff when she goes to college. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. So she'll keep us young. <laughs> Amy has worked hard to move on from her painful past. She never expected the knock on her door from police three years ago. I was absolutely shocked. Um, and I felt like one of the guys was like, are you okay? I was like, oh, yeah, wow. Back in 1998, Amy was single, a graduate student living in Indianapolis at Eagle Creek Apartments. On the morning of September 2nd, a stranger knocked on her door and asked to use her phone. She let him make a call from her porch. He wanted to return in 15 minutes to make another call, but he came back with a gun and a knife. He said, do you want to have some fun? And I said, no. And he said, well, do you want to die? And I said, no. And I remember when he tied my hands, he kind of sat on top of me and like put his knee on my back. And I remember at that time thinking, this is gonna go badly. The man raped Amy, forced her to perform oral sex, and then tried to suffocate her. Then he came back with a pillow and he shoved it in my face and I thought, oh God, this is like some other horrific sex thing. But then I realized he was trying to keep me from breathing and I started kind of fighting. And he finally got off me and I just at that point said, you know, if you're gonna kill me, just, just shoot me. Amy eventually persuaded her attacker to just leave. She called police, completed a rape exam and was interviewed by detectives. But she never returned to the apartment and never again heard from police. There's always this that I did something wrong. It was my fault. Um, I opened the door. Any kind of like confidence I had was gone. Any kind of trust I had was gone. Everything was scary. Um, it was, it, you just, somehow you have to like rebuild yourself. In December 2015, IMPD investigators working a cold case grant submitted evidence from Amy's rape case for DNA testing. Forensic science not available in 1998. A match was made on Donald Thomas, a convicted felon who at the time Amy was raped lived in the same apartment complex. I mean, my God, he was right there. He had priors. I mean, honestly, I don't understand that, you know, any self the guy had told me he was a neighbor. I had told the police that he had said he was a neighbor. So almost 20 years after the attack, police finally found a suspect. Coming up, a persistent group of women build the case to bring justice. In September 1998, Amy McKnight was raped by a stranger in her Indianapolis apartment. The case sat cold until December 2015, when new DNA testing matched Donald Thomas to evidence at the crime scene. Amy had no idea her case was being investigated again until two local policemen knocked on her door in October of 2016. Amy spent years in therapy and counseling after the attack. Billy, 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 she left Billy. Indy and moved several times before settling in La Crosse for the past decade. IMPD detective Michelle Floyd finally tracked her down. It's her choice on what I do. I explained to her the options. I told her we can continue forward 
we could stop and just put his name and stop the case. She said, let's go forward. I mean, why would I say, oh, let's not do it? I mean, here was hope to put something away that I still struggled with and still, um, in a way, had come to be something that defined me. For the past decade, Donald Thomas lived quietly here in the village of Hales Corners, Wisconsin, outside Milwaukee. He lived with and cared for his elderly mother and had no trouble with the law. Detective Floyd went to Thomas's apartment in Hales Corners. He cooperated, claimed a consensual sexual encounter, and provided a fresh DNA sample. It matched a towel at the crime scene. On the other side of Wisconsin, Amy went to La Crosse Police Headquarters and picked Thomas out of a photo array. He was arrested in January 2018 and jailed until the jury trial last July. We had strong evidence. We had a victim who was willing to cooperate and a detective that was willing to go the full way. Deputy prosecutors Linda Major and Jenna Pilipovich tried Thomas for rape and criminal deviant conduct. It was all a bunch of really badass women who um, knew what was the truth and were going to make sure things happened as they should. Because she deserved someone to fight for her and that's what we did. Some of the original case file was lost, but compelling evidence remained, including photos of the apartment after the attack. Amy's clothing cut off with a knife and that critical towel with the DNA match. That was in fact the largest part of what brought the conviction, but I also think that without the compelling, courageous testimony of the victim, that it would not have stood alone. Everybody experiences things differently, everybody copes with things differently, and for her wanting to tell this story, to hold this person accountable, arguably was part of her healing process. And I remember long ago thinking, someday I'm gonna tell the story and I'm gonna give it away and it'll be done and for me that's what the trial was like I told the story I told the whole story to a room full of strangers and it is done you know her testifying in front of the jury and we're sort of, sort of sitting right opposite the witness stand and just watching her just the the courage that that took was just staggering really after listening to two days of testimony the jury needed just 40 minutes to return with a verdict of guilty on both counts. And I just put my head down, I was like, oh my God. Um, and uh, I just couldn't believe that, it was so fast. And like for, you know, 20 years he'd been free and I thought, you know, people didn't believe me or cops hadn't believed me, this would never come to this, and 40 minutes and they were done and he was guilty. It's one of those cases you will remember because of the fact that it was a DNA hit. It did, I had to rebuild that case. There was nothing there. You had to start from scratch basically. It was nice to see a jury saw what all went into it and found him guilty. In August, Thomas received a 70 year sentence. The victim had been in the prison for over 20 years that the defendant had created for her. So I think it, has, it absolutely is just that the offender on this case is serving a sentence at least as long. His freedoms need to be taken away because mine were taken away in such a horrific manner. And I do feel like justice was done. And in a day and age where it feels like there is very little justice and very little is right in our system. Um, it's pretty amazing. Oh yeah, here we go. A mom and wife received justice unexpectedly. Yeah, me, so I don't always take notice of what he says. After more than two decades waiting and healing. Good night. I'm Rich Knight, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Now, Donald Thomas filed an appeal last month asking for a reduced sentence. His earliest release date right now is January of 2053. Now, Amy did not read her victim statement in court, but she did read it for Rich. You can hear her complete statement online right now. We've got it posted on WTHR.com slash 13 investigates.